Hi, welcome to another edition of Grand Lake Tracks and 3D Printed Trains with Socrates. We're here in Mountain taking a look at something I uh, wanted to build, which is a track re-railer. I was inspired by the one on this bridge, on the Mountain Bridge over the Amsterdam Rijker Canal. And it's pretty good looking. So that was my basic motivation and I mean I've seen re railers before but that was the thing that I used to see on my bike rides or I still see on my bike rides when I head over to Vesp to buy some eggs, the Rondel Iron, fantastic uh, egg boudrai, I don't know it's a farm. Anyway, I uh, decided I wanted to build my own re railers I built them in both a smaller and a larger version of them and the easiest way to build it is to first build yourself a normal piece of straight track and then add it to that. So here's a quick video. I'm making a short piece of straight track and uh, I'm adding the re-railer to it after I've completed this short piece of straight track. It's basically the same straightforward building process that I've used in, in the straight video. I uploaded my straight jig and the tri beds for the straight jig, I, uh, straight jig, I uploaded that recently. And basically, when you have that completed, you can use this as a secondary jig to add the, the re-railer rails to a piece of straight track. So you can see here already in the video, I've made the straight track, and now I'm adding two pieces of straight rail as the re-railers. I'm marking them off basically the same as you do a guard rail, mark the ends off, and then make a little nip, a little triangle nip out of it, and then bend it, and then have to clean off the edge of it. So basically I was doing both at the same time. I figured they should be mirrored images of each other. And you can't let them touch because you're still having to maintain a lack of short between the two sides because if there's a direct short, one side of the rail is positive, the other rail is negative, and you can't have an electrical connection between them. So my first thought was that the rails would touch, but that would create a short. And you'll notice eventually in this one, I made a mistake where I used the Fast Tracks short uh, already gapped ties and they have a double gap on it which unfortunately put the gap directly underneath the re-railer itself. So when you do this, if you decide to use it, make sure you use a single gapped tie and I uploaded my tie gapper tool which does you cut the ties off to length and then you place them inside the thing and you can put a gap right through it. and. That was a mistake I made on this because I was trying to use up the last of my fast track ties. So trying to be efficient with your stuff can lead to problems. Now, I also was using a little piece of PCP tie as a gap tool. Um, when you're making turnouts, it's a really easy thing to put on the diverging rail so the diverging rail is a proper distance away in the open position. And so it's become my go-to gap uh, creator. So I put a little PCP gap, PCB board gap in between the rail and the re-railer so as to make sure the proper space is between them. And here's about when I notice that, yep, I have no gap in these things and that gap itself is underneath the rail. So it took a few minutes to contemplate my options. I could have taken it apart, started again, but that doesn't really work so well. So I decided that I could simply gap the existing ties once I put one of the two sides on. So since I had already completed the piece of straight track and this was really just a little trial piece, I figured I'll push ahead through it and see if it can work the way I'm doing it. So I then went ahead and soldered on the small re-railer pieces on both sides or on the one side and then I'll take it apart and use the triangle file to create the gaps manually, which is why I created this uh, the gap tool in the first place that's what this thing was all about is because the task of manually gapping these things is really, really annoying. And I forced myself to have to do manual gapping on the one side. So as you can see, I got the manual gaps in. It works, but it was definitely a whole lot more task and I wanted to make sure there wasn't a short. So I checked it with the polarity or the uh, continuity on my voltmeter and then went back to the process of putting in the other one. 
trying to remember not to use them again, but I didn't have any more, so it's not a problem. But if you have the pre-gapped short ties from fast tracks, do not use them for the re-railer itself because you will cause not only problems with the uh, structural, well, where do you solder it, but also you will cause a, a direct short. But once that little problem was solved, I moved forward. So once everything seems to be nicely put together, I'll check it with a piece of train, uh, just a piece of a train coupler I have, and using a little straight screwdriver, leverage it out, cut the ends off with the standardized end jig, also on Thingiverse, and hit it with a quick little bit of a file. And the next step is to glue it on with the plow bond, and you've got a nice piece of re-railer. I use them on my main time saver, on the main track. There's I put two of them. I think they kind of look cool. They seem to work. Uh, I don't really, the train's not really running yet. It's I'm doing feeder lines, and I got the frogs in, at least on the time saver section. So it's progressing. It's progressing. And it's going to be dark soon, so I won't have anything else to do because it's going to be winter time again. So back to the train. Anyway, that's a re-railer. The STLs are available on Thingiverse. I would highly recommend not using them as the full jig. I would definitely say you should build it, download the straight jig first and uh, make your straight track with that and then add the re-railer to it. Yeah, they seem to work. The, there's a tie bed printout specifically for it. It has a little tiny block in the middle to try to make sure that the point does exist and has the cutouts for the rails because it doesn't really fit in a regular uh, tie printout. Not the ones I make anyway. I'm sure you could use some other wood, etc. And I hope you liked it. Like it on Thingiverse. Like it here. Subscribe here. Subscribe there. Subscribe everywhere. Thanks for watching. I got another video of the train too.